Hi everyone. Joining the presenters panel today is Mr. Dirish Patel, who is the director at Aussie's group Clayton Office, one of the most sought after migration agents in Victoria. He has immense knowledge and expertise about engineering occupations and PR pathway. He is highly skilled at handling case complexities and takes pride in assisting the international student community with settling down in Australia. Mr. Girish comes with a wealth of information and unique case scenarios concerning engineering occupations, which will surely benefit our guests joined today. Uh, this session is being recorded. If time permits, we will take a few questions at the end of the session. But if you need your questions answered in a personalized way, please tune into our dedicated Q&A session at the end of today from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Our experts will be waiting to take your questions. Now I'll hand it over to Mr. Girish to start with the session. Uh, thank you very much, Agam, for gi giving the introduction. Uh, hello, viewers. My name is Girish Kumar Patel, and uh, I'm a registered migration agent working at Aussie's Group Clayton. Uh, I've been working this in the system, it's been a long time so far. And today uh, I'm going to talk about the engineering occupations and their PR pathway. So we are starting about the engineering occupations first. We'll begin with the requirement of the skill assessment. What are the way that you can what are the way that you can make an applications under the engineering Australia? What are their pathway? Uh, in Engineering Australia Skill Assessment Authority. Uh, we talk about the 189, 190, 491 employer sponsor related to the engineering occupations. And we'll give some tips and tricks how you can able to uh, you know pursue your peer pathway and how you can make a decision where you have the a way to get permanent visa within the short time frame in Australia. So I'll give the introduction about the Engineering Australia and we'll start it. Uh, as you can see that my name is Girish Kumar J. Patel and today's topic is about the engineering occupation and PR pathway. So as you know that Engineering Australia also uh, closely work with the internal uh, education department as well Department of Home Affairs and the uh, universities uh, to develop and design their courses to make sure that uh, students study accordingly in Engineering Australia, in engin engineering occupation in Australia. So first of all we talk about the what are the skill assess, uh, skills they assess in uh, Engineering Australia? Uh, there are four ways where you can make an applications. You can make an applications under the professional engineer. You can make an applications. Uh, oh, sorry, what's going on? Oh, you can make an application under the professional engineer. You can make an application under the engineering technologist. You can make an applications through the engineering associate, and uh, you can make application under the engineering manager. We talk about the professional engineers now. If you have completed your qualifications and that qualification, if you are completed for minimum for four years, assume that if you have completed your study for bachelor in engineering for in mechanical for four years minimum, and that qualification you have completed after following year 12, you can make an applications under the professional engineer. For example, if you have completed applications under the bachelor in civil engineer for four years minimum, and you want to make an applications for permanent pathway, uh, and under the general skill migration, you can make an applications to the engineering Australia under the professional engineering category. So under the professional engineering, there are a lot of occupations comes. Uh, you can say mechanical engineer, electronics engineer, telecommunication engineer, agriculture engineer, uh, civil engineers, uh, industrial engineers. These are the occupation which comes under the professional engineering category. For that, you must require a degree that has to be completed after year, uh, year 12, and it has to be at least four years of degree. If you have completed the diploma leading to bachelor, D to D, let's say diploma for three years, and if you are completed for bachelor for another three years, altogether, if you are completed six years of degree qualifications, then you can also eligible to make an application under the professional engineer pathway. <clears throat> Uh, following the professional engineering, we can talk about the engineering technologies. Under the engineering technologies, if you have completed the degree, the qualification for minimum three years, uh, and uh, that considered as an engineering degree, then you can make an application. As, you can make an application under the engineering technologies. Uh, there are a lot of applicants who have completed that degree in United Kingdom uh, or even in Pakistan, where the qualification is just for only bachelor of engineering for only three years after completing their year 12. So they can eligible to apply for uh, application under the engineering technologies. 
Now, make sure you remember that if you have completed your study uh, in engineering and it is only for three years, you cannot be eligible to apply for applications under the professional engineering category. You have to go through either engineering technologist category or engineering associate, which we'll talk about later. Uh, make sure uh, when you talk about the engineering when we talk about the engineering technologies, if you have completed, major of the clients come from the United Kingdom or Pakistan, where they have completed their study for only three years and they make an applications under the engineering technologist. Now, engineering associate, uh, if you have completed qualifications under the advanced diploma or associate degree after following, uh, following uh, like completing after year 12, you can make an applications under the engineering associate. There are a lot of occupations. Uh, you can talk about uh, uh, civil engineer draft person, mechan mechanical engineer draft person, uh, telecommission network engineer draft person, telecommission network planner, Telecommission network engineer. So there are a lot of occupations comes under this particular category under the engineering associate. <laughs> under the engineering associate, if your qualification is accredited by the engineering Australia, or else, even though if it's not accredited by engineering Australia, but if you have completed your study here in Australia, uh, assume that if you have completed your study advanced diploma in telecommission network engineer from one of the institute for two years in Australia itself you can get skill assessment directly through the Engineering Australia. You don't need to go for any other pathway. Engineering manager. After completing uh, your qualification uh, for uh, year 12, if you have completed your study for four years and if you have professional engineering experience uh, near about seven years, then you can make an application under the engineering manager occupations. To apply for engineering manager occupations, make sure you require the seven years, near about seven years of experience in professional engineer plus four years of engineering management experience to be eligible for this category. So these are the four ways where you can make an applications through the Engineering Australia. <clears throat> now, there are types of pathway for skill assessment. They have technically two pathways to make an applications. One is the pathway called accredited pathway. Uh, and another, another one is called non-accredited pathway. Now, when you talk about the accredited pathway, they got five ways to make applications under the accredited pathway. And uh, one of the uh, one of the accredited pathways is called Australian qualifications. Assume that if you have completed your study bachelor in engineering in mechanical from India, and you came here to study in master of mechanical engineer, and uh, if if you have done master of mechanical engineer, for example, in Central Queensland University in Melbourne campus. Uh, you don't need to do a. You don't need to go for the CDA pathway. Now, when you talk about the uh, Australian qualification pathway, because there are a lot of a lot of qualifications where if you have done master in mechanical engineer from CQ any other campuses except the Melbourne campuses, they may not assess your degree. They then you have to go for the CDA pathway. So make sure if you go into the engineering website or authority website, they have the Australian qualification pathway and they have listed the, all the university's name and their qualifications and their accreditations, uh, whether it's a full or provisional. If it is comes under the provisional, make sure you do not make any applications. But if it is comes if it is comes under the like you know full accreditations, then you can make an applications under this pathway. All right. Uh, second is called Washington Accord. Now there are a lot of uh, inst uh, institutes from overseas where they are, uh, you know, accredited through the Washington Accord. And if your university is uh, listed under the Washington Accord pathway, then you don't need to provide the CDR. That means you don't need to provide any projects to do a skill assessment. It's apply same as it's apply same into the Dublin Accord or Sydney Accord. If it is accredited by a particular authority and if it is uh, listed, if your qualification and university is listed under that particular accords, then you don't need to provide any kind of projects to do a migration skill assessment through the Engineering Australia. For example, there is an industry called Sarda Patel University, which is uh, listed under the Washington Accord. There are a lot of uh, universities uh, listed on the Washington account. If you have completed a study from UK universities, there are a lot of clients who come here on skill uh, uh, skill graduate recognized visa. Like let's say if you're, because if your university is uh, accredited and listed under the Washington Accord, you could be eligible to apply for 476 uh, graduate skill visa pathway. 
and even though you also uh, eligible to apply for the skill assessment under this particular uh, category accredited pathway as well. So you don't need to provide any projects. You don't need to make any CDR submission. No need to do any additional work to get a skill assessment done for permanence applications. All right. We talk about the non accredited pathway, which is a uh, CDR. If you have completed your study in India or any other country, and if your study is not recognized by any of these uh, accord or Australian qualifications, and um, if you if you want to do accredited your CDR or your qualifications uh, to apply for permanent residence visa, you need to provide the three projects. It's called competency demonstration report. You need to provide three projects. You need to demonstrate your engineering skill to Engineering Australia in order to get the skill assessment for permanent pathway. We talk about the non-accredited pathway CDR because when you talk about the non-accredited pathway CDR, there are a lot of things uh, need to be careful when you make an applications uh, for the CDR. Uh, and there are three projects that you need to demonstrate to the Engineering Australia. <laughs> the, the first things you need to make sure that the qualification obtained in Australia is a direct accredited within Engineering Australia. Uh, uh, when you apply for skill assessment application, all document has to be proper scan. Uh, we recommend to our clients to scan on the 300 DPI. DPI means dot per inch. That means it should look visible and it should look more clear when you submit your applications. It has to be scanned. Make sure you remember that it has to be scanned under 300 DPI. OK, so that's uh, they have the more quality when you scan under 300 DPI. And the fees is 291.50 Australian dollar for the engineering Australia. Now, for those who want to make an application on this accredited pathway, um, they they need to make an application. Uh, they make sure you uh, you provide the up to date resume and your documents again proper scan on the three double zero DPI, and the application fees is four seven zero point eight zero dollar. Okay. <clears throat> now we talk about the CDR, the Competency Demonstration uh, Pathway. The applicant having their overseas degree in list of engineering, but uh, their Australia, uh, their qualification is not directly accreditations by any engineering Australian pathway. Then you need to provide three CDR plus CPD. CPD means continuous professional development. Since you have completed your engineering uh, study, what you have done, what is your professional engineering uh, skills, what kind of work are you doing right now, and then you have to provide your uh, continuous development to CDP, CPD. Uh, also, we need to provide this summary of statement on three projects report submitted by an applicant in bachelor or master. So that summary of report that on the base of the uh, projects that we submit to the Engineering Australia, we make sure that the summary is aligned with your projects and it has to be up to date. And uh, it takes uh, the the fees is uh, 795 for Engineering Australia, and if you go for the fast track, you have to make additional charges, 335 dollar. As per this website, they said that the fast track takes at least 15 to 20 days. But make sure you remember that don't go with the website because they're getting a high volume of application. It takes at least 1.5 months to get approval, or means to get outcome. <clears throat> All right, so again, you need to provide the proper documents and everything. <clears throat> this is very much important. As you know that most of applicants who comes in Australia, their qualification is not accredited by any of those accords or not accredited by any of the engineering Australian um, you know, accreditations. So what happened is that most of applicants provide the CDR, the competency demonstration report. They need to demonstrate the three projects to the front of the engineering Australia, and then they how that's how they do assessment through that particular pathway. And I can see that there are a lot of applicants who make an applications. Uh, they uh, under the CDR pathway, they make a lot of mistakes and their application get rejected. And also uh, that a lot of things happen, even though they get positive outcome. The second thing, they get negative outcome under the plagiarism. They get a 12, 12 months of ban. And third, sometimes if you're technical, if you don't have put too much technical uh, engineering things inside to the projects, you, you get the engineering technologies assessment. Because if you try to apply an application under the professional engineer, but if you do not have demonstrated your technicals, 
uh, engineering technical um, skills into the CDR, then you get the outcome under the engineering technology. So the engineering Australian uh, assessor think that you do not have that much skill in engineering. So that's how they get the outcome into the particular engi uh, engineering technologist. So the first one is that the word limits. <clears throat> The word limit has to be under 2000, between 2000 to 2250. Because what happened there, the engineering of Australia used to consider that if you had a more than 2250 words, they used to consider it, but now there's a bit streaks and they don't want to go and read that lengthy uh, uh, CDR. They want to keep it simple and straight. Make sure you write point to points. And sometimes what happened is that uh, there are a lot of applicants who write the CDR. They actually talk less engineering skill and talk different things into the application. So uh, when you make the CDR, make sure you don't go more than 2,250 words. That's a wise decision if you make a CDR by your own way, right? A subject code. It's very much important. Um, be, uh, okay, now Engineering Australia used to good and they are doing a lot of scrutinities nowadays, very much strict nowadays, so they do a lot of scrutinities as well. Subject code, um, make sure uh, subjects code has to be there. Uh, for example, if you are making applications for civil engineer and you talk about the construction, so and you want to make the subject, if you, if you have projects related to the steel frame design, so make sure you should have that steel frame design subject code on your CDR. So if you just write different kind of subjects code and then, you know, officer may not interested to read your whole CDR at all because they actually do read, you know. So it, it should be the subject code should be what you write in about that project. So subject, su subject code should be aligned with your projects, okay? Uh, then time frame. Um, Okay, now sometimes you also have to write down how long the projects took to, uh, you know, the the projects took to make it uh, like because when you make a pro when you have done the projects during your academic time, uh, they also want you to do it, uh, make sure that if you are completed the projects within two months or three months or five months, you know, the the time frame should be there. Uh, third, the position. Uh, if you have made your projects uh, along with your colleagues, let's say your uh, your college mates, make sure your position would be there. And each and every person name should be in that particular org chart, in that position, into the name, your super, supervisor name should be there as well. Make sure you do write those things, right? The next one is a practical application of knowledge acquired for the subject study. Uh, Sometimes what happens is that uh, uh, during your study, like you, you have subjects for project one, for example, if you did, if you are doing bachelor in civil engineer in your last semester or, or sixth or seventh semester, you get the project. So they write in your transcript, they write down project one. So when you write down a project one, okay, project one is about uh, subject. So that subject should be, you know, aligned with the, your uh, the, the subjects that you have completed. So whatever the projects you do, for example, if you're doing for the steel frame design, so you must have completed related the subjects as well. So if you're not done, done any kind of steel frame design related subjects during your academic career, then Engineering Australia may think that if you have not studied related to, to that particular subjects, why would you make a projects for the steel frame design? So your subject whatever subjects you have done the projects has to be aligned with the subjects as well all right and you have to demonstrate the knowledge that what you have learned during the subjects and what you have implemented that particular knowledge to your projects okay so it has to be aligned to each other and if you're making a project which is not related to your subjects it doesn't make any sense so make sure it is it has to be aligned with each other all right uh <clears throat> Sometimes what happens is that there are a lot of applicants who come up with us uh, and they say that Giris, we did only one project or two projects. We haven't done three projects because if your study is not accredited, you need to provide, you need to demonstrate three projects. How would you do that? So what happens is that sometimes you can also make three uh, three uh, CDR on the base of one project because sometimes what happens is that the project is too lengthy. For example, if you are making a, a construction project. Uh, in first CDR, you may write about the uh, design. What 
what you have talk about you need you can talk about the design like you know what you have done in design what kind of skills you utilize in design then in second project you can talk about the limitations you know the labor how much labor going to be caused there how much waste is going to be talk uh, you can talk about in project 2 in labor wastage the time frame the joining area you can talk, talk about the earthquake let's, let's say if you making the construction project what are the earthquake uh, you know the measurement of the earthquake the measurement of timing the joining the lot of thing has been there and the final you can in project third you can talk about the construction you know so even though if you have one projects you can make it uh, three in one project you can you can you know distribute into three different different category and you can make three cdr on the base of one project but make sure you write down all these things and you you implement you implement you write down about your skills and knowledge about your engineering okay the technical knowledge should be there if you not write down the technical knowledge um the sub according the subjects that you completed then engineering australian assessor may think that this person does not have that much knowledge about engineering okay uh <clears throat> input okay when you when you write down about the position like make sure you put you write down about the input you know input about the technicals uh, as we discuss in case if you have uh, an experience there are a lot of applicants who's got a more than one year of experience you can also make a projects on the base of the experience uh, because the experience because you do the uh, bachelor in uh, civil engineer then you start the job and if you have an experience you can also make the projects on the base of the experience as well okay when you make the projects also you should write down about the difficulty face during that uh, project sometime you you face a lot of difficulties if you are making a construction project you you make a lot of difficulties and you have to write down the solution and difficulties as well that does that consider into that particular cdr as well okay um all right make sure you remember that one uh, and then we can talk about the graph okay next one is the plagiarism when these things to be noted while you making a cdr the plagiarism should be less than 2% make sure you check the plagiarism in appropriate plagiarism software and if you don't check it and if you have more than 2% of plagiarism i would suggest don't go for more than 2% of uh, 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 person of plagiarism if you have more than 2% you may get caught you may get uh, banned for next 12 months so it's recommended that your cdr because projects are different than cdr because cdr is on base of the projects so your project and cdr both are less than 2% no images graph or any calculation part uh, from internet sources because when you make an application i have seen that lot of applicant that does uh, copy and paste it from the internet sources so make sure you remember that if you uh, before you submitting the application to the engineering australia the cdr uh you check the graph that uh, or images uh, not copied from the internet you can just what you can do is you can take the graph you can paste into the google you may able to get it the uh, you know from the google itself that whether it's been copied from any sources or not and even though if you what you can do is other way around when you do the plagiarism check you also get the report uh, report card and into the report card you can see that how much percentage has been copied from which kind of sources so you also get the source link make sure you check the source links before you submitting the applications and once you submit the application obviously you can't change it uh, once it's gone is gone and make sure you have to remember that if it is come back and if engineering australian authority ask you to provide the real projects then you have to provide the real projects as well because sometime engineering australia ask you to provide the original copy of your projects and if you don't have the original copy of project they can ask you to provide the scan copy so make sure you also scan each and every pages and you can provide that original copy to the engineering officer in case if they ask it uh so we talk about no images from internet that's we discuss it proper dis uh, distribution of word for each section now proper distribution of word means that when you make the applications um, the word should be aligned to each other so when you start making a, a particular uh, cdr so it should be aligned which each para should be aligned with each other and if you if you go if you not write down proper submission like kind of proper projects and if you not uh, align those wording to each other and if the words are not aligning aligning which either and not giving a proper knowledge about the projects 
then again the assessor may not interested to read your whole projects all right so that has to be very much important it has to be clear and up to points they don't need extra information it's very much important because they hate that one all right so it has to be clear and up to date points they don't need extra information and that's what we talk about and next one is the organization chart organization chart is like a, as we discussed before make sure you write down supervisor name team members names and whoever has participated that particular projects uh, the name should be into the organization chart otherwise the engineering australia may ask you to provide the details for the zone as well all right so make sure you uh, remember these things to be noted while you're making a cdr all right associate degrees uh, sometime if you are uh, like you know your associate degrees are accredited by the engineering australia you do not have and um, if you do not have projects, then if you need a skill assessment, you can do two years of associate degree directly created by Engineering Australia. There are a lot of courses are available. For example, graduate diploma in telecommunication network engineering is available through Milcom College, and they do provide this kind of uh, two years of courses that lead to the telecommunication network planner or telecommunication network officer. You can do skill assessment without providing CDR. It's very much recommended those applicants who's got a band for 12 months. I would suggest don't waste your time on temporary assistance visa. If you waste your time on temporary assistance visa, and if you do not, and after that, again, when you apply for Engineering Australia applications, you, you have higher chances to get a band. So I would rec recommend you to start a kind of a study which is accredited by Engineering Australia directly. For example, a diploma, a graduate diploma in telecommunication network engineer. So in case if you're not able to get a skill assessment again, you can do through the engineering Australia directly without providing a CDR. So it's recommended for those applicants who's not, who's got a ban for 12 months. It's very much uh, helpful for them, these courses. And if you do this kind of courses, there is another course called graduate diploma in civil engineering. It's available for a lot of, uh, available through a lot of colleges. Uh, it's accredited by engineering Australia directly. And what you can do is you can do those courses in Sydney or Adelaide or Perth. Then you can get the uh, skill assessment, and then it's have it's got an easy pathway to apply for permanent visa. So this is one of the tips that make sure if you are banned, I would suggest meet one of our migration agent to our nearest office and tell them to start these courses. It's really good courses, and you can get skill skill assessment without the pro uh, without the CDR. All right. No employment assessment. There are a lot of applicants who's got a CDR on the base of the pro bachelor academic projects plus and uh, the experience projects. So what happens is that let's say if you have a uh, project on the base of engineer on the base of experience, and if you has got a more than three years of experience in overseas, or if you got one, more than one year of experience here in Australia, and if you want to do skill employment assessment to purpose of uh, to claim a points for the purpose of the immigration, then what you can do is you need to provide those documents. Sometimes you can also do an applications, uh, you know, along with the engineering Australia. If you don't want to do uh, with the CDR pathway or any other pathway, if you don't want to do it, once you get the skill assessment done, you can do the skill employment assessment after getting the positive outcome into the engineering Australia. Uh, employment assessment. When you do the employment assessment, these are the things that you need to be make sure. The employment reference letter. It has to be under the company's letterhead where it should be there because uh, it's very much important uh, when you do the employment assessment through the engineering Australia, they are very uh, fussy about that the pay rate uh, if you are working for example in india it should be as per that uh, market rate salary if you're getting salary in cash if you're not getting a um, provident fund if you're not getting a salary in bank account if you're not paying your taxes your application will not get assessed under the employment assessment so make sure you remember that one uh, I have seen a lot of clients from uh, overseas, uh, India, Pakistan, where they're getting a salary in cash. And if you're not getting a provident fund, even though if you're getting a salary in cash, it should be fine. But if you're not getting a provident fund, if you have no provident fund, uh, uh, like you know, statement, you will not get assessed under the employment assessment. So it's make sure that you must require the provident fund. Uh, obviously, official government tax report. Uh, it's very much important when you make this uh, employment reference later, uh, it should be the duties should be there, the hours work should be there, the position should be there, it should be signed by the supervisor or general manager or HR or their official contact details, let's say director. Uh, 
and the duties should be aligned with that particular professional engineer. If you're making an application under the civil engineer, and if you want to do skill, skill employment assessment under the civil engineer, the, the duties should be there as per the civil engineer, not as per the civil engineer technician. And there are a lot of ways that you, you can get a skill employment assessment and you can have the different kind of position over there. You can have different kind of designation over there. You can have the graduate engineer position. You can have the, uh, make, uh, for example, engineering uh, maintenance engineer position. You have the, uh, you know, the uh, engineer, uh, civil engineer position. So that kind of different, different designation would be there, but the duties should be aligned with that particular professional engineer. OK, so make sure you remember that one. The application fees is 451 and when they apply with qualification, it's $360. So these are the charges for the application for the skill employment assessment. Now, this is we talk about uh, see, uh, skill assessment. Um, if you have any query question, you can ask me uh, when we are about to finish this session. Next one is uh, skill select. OK, this is we go. So when you complete your, if you have an experience and if you have skill assessment, if you have enough points to apply for general skill migration, uh, you can go for the 189 visa category, which is a skill independent category, or you can go for the 190 state nomination category, or else under the 491, there are two stream. One is called family stream, and another one is called regional stream. You can go e either way around. You can make an application on those one. So this is the planning levels uh, for this particular uh, uh, years like 2021 we haven't got any updated uh, one yet for the next year planning level we'll get soon maybe in within a week and we discuss about in 2019-20 they had actual they had a 16 16,652 for the whole 189 which was dropped by 6,500 uh, in 2021 so that was a major drop it, it was a huge drop in 61 percent but the, when you talk about the regional and nominated it was a huge drop as well, more than 50% drop, but still they managed to get invited under the lot of uh, under the few states and regional categories. So you can talk about this is the uh, this is the planning level. This year maybe we get more uh, planning. Or we can get more uh, you know numbers of ceilings uh, to be uh, to eligible to apply for under these two category, uh, three category 189, 491, 191. But we are hoping to get the new update soon. Now, this one was uh, uh, happened in May, uh, sorry, April, because as you know that from January 2021 this year, the government announced that for under the 189 and 491 family sponsor stream, you'll get invited each quarter. So after every three months, you'll get invitation according their planning level and according their, you know, merit list. Because under the 189, we received uh, like all, all together, not we, but uh, they, they invited 500 applications uh, under the 189. And in last invitation round, there were pro uh, there were production engineers who got invited with 80 points only. And there was biomedical engineers who got invited with 90 points. Uh, in last invitation round in April round, they, uh, we had a two category production engineer and biomedical engineer who's got invited with 80 and 90 points. Under the family stream, they also got invited with same points. So those who have done the production engineer assessment or biomedical engineer, they got a good chance to get inviting under 80 or 90 points subsequently. So if you're looking to apply for 189 visa under the production engineer or biomedical engineer, you got a good chance to get invited. We are also hoping to get invitation under the different categories. Uh, Civil engineer was invited on the 90 points in September invitation round last year, 2020. Uh, and the date of effect was July 2020. So those who have applied the EOI on July 2020, they received the invitation in September round last year. Since then, we haven't received any invitation. Apart from these three occupations, mechanical engineer or any other occupations, they did not receive any invitation since March 2020. Last year, that was the last invitation round where we received the other professional engineers occupations, aeronautical engineer or any other occupations, environmental engineer, agriculture engineer. They received the invitation last uh, was on March 2020. Since then, we haven't received any invitation and there was a 90 points, uh, you know, cut up points uh, for last year. <clears throat> so after that, they don't receive the invitation. So the backlogs would be there. 
So I urge everyone that uh, because of the backlogs, uh, you may have less chances, even though if they start again to inv invitation under the 189 category for the engineering professionals, the backlogs would be there a lot. Uh, so I would recommend you to, uh, you know, choose the alternative pathway like 189, uh, 190 state sponsorship or 491 regional sponsorship. If you have points um, and if you're meeting those requirements. So parallelly uh, or sub subsequently, you can, uh, you know, choose the different pathways as well. To apply for permanent visa to Australia. Now, <clears throat> PR pathway engineering as of as of now closed 2021 financial will open again in July 2021. Uh, okay, we are we already discussed about 189. Now we're going to talk about the 190 and 491 categories for different different states for different different occupations in engineering. Uh, Guys, this is uh, inside information that we can share it, like how you can improve your chances to get invited under this particular category if you are living in that particular state. Um, those who are living in Victoria State, um, the, the Victoria State is closed now. We used to have a good numbers of invitation in uh, engineering professionals, especially in engineering technologist occupations. Those who have done the assessment in engineering professional, they are eligible to apply for engineering technologies assessment as well. You can hold two skill assessment at the same time. It's not a big deal if you uh, that a lot of things, a lot of applicants say that can you hold two skill assessment at the same time? Yes. If you have skill assessment in different occupations and if it is validate for a certain period, once more, engineering or student skill assessment is valid for forever, but for migration purpose, it's valid for three years. Because once you are engineers, you are always engineers. That's what Engineering Australia, Australia, Australia believes. So once you have the Engineering Australia assessment in through Engineering Australia, uh, obviously uh, it's valid for at least three years. And I also have seen in past uh, and recently where they have got skill assessment on the base of CDR, maybe three years ago. And then when they reapply again, when their applications, uh, that's what then where their skill assessment is got expired, when they reapplied again, uh, Engineering Australia checked their previous CDR on the base of previous CDR. They gave them 12 months of ban. So it's also happening. So make sure before expire your CDR, uh, your skill assessment, make sure you make any applications under the any, any 189 or 190 or 491 pathway. <clears throat> Don't wait for a longer period, all right? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, we talk about the Victoria State itself. Victoria State is closed right now, uh, and we're waiting to get new update from July uh, for July 2021. We're hoping to get good news because last uh, last time where they open and they closed down in April 2020, and since April 2020 till June 2021 this year, we had majority of occupation we received the invitation under the health occupations. We did receive a couple of uh, nearly three or four invitation uh, through our offices and the engineering occupations, but they were working into the health sector. So those engineers were working into the health sectors directly or indirectly through the government projects, and they were invited under those particular categories, um, and they are happily to get uh, invited. But last in, last year we have received the invitation under those who have completed two years of study. Uh, in Victoria in engineering and those who had an offer later in engineering were receiving invitation under the 190, uh, you know, recent graduate pathway. We had a recent graduate pathway which was closed by Victorian government in April 2020 due to the pandemic. They wanted to only support the pandemic health worker or pandemic occupations. So in case if you are working in Victoria and if you are working in your occupations, but if it is uh, directly or indirectly supporting the health or medical research or economic recovery, then only you have the high chance to get invited. Again, you need six months of minimum experience in Victoria to be eligible for 190 state sponsorship. You need minimum 60 points by yourself and five points you can get through the state sponsorship. So make sure you remember that one, your occupations in engineering has to support to the Victorian economy or medical research or health or health response directly and indirectly, then only you have high chances to get invited. Otherwise, it's not. Make sure you're getting salary, super and everything. They ask for those documents as well when you make an application to Victoria State Sponsorship. This is one of the, uh, you know, good chance when you make an application to Victoria. Another one is a 491 State Sponsorship. If you are working three months minimum, 
okay, make sure you remember that if you are working in your engineering field and if you are working part time, casual, or full time, uh, still you are eligible to apply for the Victoria State sponsorship. But I would recommend try to get a full time job because they are prioritized those who have full time job. They do prioritize those who have part time job, but uh, full time jobs uh, candidates get higher chance to get invited than the part time jobs. Again, 491 applicants also uh, those who are working in health or economic recovery occupations and since last three months getting invited. They're getting they just need 50 points by themselves and 15 points they can get from the regional Victoria State itself. All right. So this we talk about the Victoria State. Now we I have uh, written a few of the occupations where we have invited. We invited in mechanical engineer. The applicant was working uh, and his assessment was in engineering technologies, but he had an assessment in mechanical engineer and he also had an assessment in engineering technologies. So we didn't make an application under the engineering technologies. The applicant was working six months in, uh, you know, in a in a company where the they were making the, uh, you know, equipments for the hospitals, uh, and they got invited and he's got invited under the engineering technologies occupations. Even if you are working in mechanical engineering stream, Victoria more prefer. Uh, for those who are working in the engineering technologies category, even if you're working in mechanical, still you're eligible to apply for it. It's not a big deal, but uh, engineering technologies get more priority than particular mechanical engineering. I don't know why they giving you those priority, but even though we also got invited in the mechanical engineer occupations uh, and engineering technologies, uh, electronics engineering, chemical engineering, biomedical engineering, these are the hot favorite, you can say the hot occupations for Victoria State itself. Apart from this, uh, other occupations, civil and all those occupations are also hot occupations in Victoria, but not that much as compared to this force, all right? But they also have good chance in case if they come up with the good news in this year, but we haven't come up with the good news yet. Uh, we're waiting for one more week to get more updates from Victoria State. Now, Victoria State, uh, they had received uh, like you know, seven thousand one hundred fifty-seven ROI. So that is one more one more catch here. They're getting high volume of applications. So even though sixty points is minimum requirement to be eligible, but if you have higher points, uh, and it, because when you make the registration of interest, make sure you make a proper submission uh, that how your occupation can be benefiting to the current pandemic situation. The word that you use. It's very much important to get invitation under the Victoria State itself. So when you make an application, make sure you use a proper wording and use a COVID a lot to when you submit the application. So this is very much important because they are prioritized the COVID related health occupation related occupations where they're getting a more invitations. And due to the high volume applications, if you have a higher point, if you are working related to health occupations, you get invited, you have a very good chance to get invited. And Next one, we go to NSW, very much hot favorite. You know, NSW is a hot favorite state right now for everyone, uh, especially uh, for engineering, engineering and IT occupations. Because uh, if you are seeking, if you are looking for 190 state sponsorship, um, uh, state sponsorship, NSW and Queensland are the best state to get invited under 189, 190, unless if you have studied two years in WA or Tasmania or Darwin. Uh, Adelaide do get invited. We'll talk about the Adelaide further, but we talk about the 190 uh, South Australia. These are the hot, hot, hot occupations: engineering manager, civil engineer, uh, geotechnical engineer, structural engineer, transport engineer, industrial engineer, mechanical engineer, production engineer, and aeronautical engineer. Biomedical engineer, naval architect, engineer professional, civil engineer technician, civil engineer draft persons. We talk about civil engineer draft persons, electrical engineer uh, draft person, electrical engineer draft person. If you have done diploma or uh, sorry graduate diploma in those particular uh, engineering field, you could get in uh, skills. You can get skills without providing sorry CDR. Now these are the occupations where they get invited. If you talk about civil civil engineer here, if you talk about civil engineer here. Civil engineer got invited with 85 plus five points. So altogether they had 90 points and NSW doesn't ask for the experience in NSW, but it's always good to have an experience. If you have more than one year of experience, when you make an NSW applications, make sure you do skill employment assessment because they are asking for skill employment assessment if you are claiming five points for the engineering uh, experience, right? 
civil engineer, uh, the uh, geotechnical structure and mechanical engineer. These are the very much hot occupations where they have invited with 90 points, including state. In civil, we did receive the invitation with 85 plus 5 from the state sponsorship. The applicant was, um, uh, you know, trans uh, he uh, moved from N uh, Victoria to NSW uh, and he got invited within one week because uh, the NSW doesn't ask for the experience in uh, NSW itself. You must be uh, leaving and you must be uh, working in any field uh, in NSW in order to get invitation through the NSW state sponsorship. So make sure those who those candidates who are looking to apply for 189 or 190, NSW is the best state to move there. If you have higher points because NSW prioritizes those applicants who's got higher points, uh, English proficiency eight in each band and uh, experience. So in case if you don't have experience, that's fine. But these are the you know their priority uh, list. Those who have higher point and eight bands in English proficiency, they get invited first. Those do not have higher point. And I would recommend that make sure you get minimum 85 points by yourself if you want to explore your chance to get invited to the NSW state. OK. All right. Under the 491, uh, more majority of occupations are open under the NSW regional category. Um, recently they closed, but they will open, uh, open again. They are asking for 12 months minimum part time experience in NSW. However, if you have completed three or six months between three to six months of part time experience, in your nominated occupations, you are eligible to make an application to NSW regional. NSW regional is the only state who's got a higher number of quota to the federal government, but they could not able to fulfill the whole quota. So in case if you're able to get a, uh, a experience in NSW regional, you have a good chance to get invited. It's very good. After three or six months, between three to six months, you can be eligible to apply for 491 NSW. And also in case if you get higher point, in case if you're living in an NSW regional area, you can be eligible to apply for 491 plus 190, both categories at the same time. All right, so we go with the Tasman estate. Tasman, it's very hard to find a job, but it's not a, if you try yourself, you can also find a job. Those who could not able to find a job, I would not recommend to go to Tasmania because Tasmania is pit fussy. If you don't have a job, even though if you meet that 12 months of study requirement or to, still they don't give a, a invitations. So for 190 pathway, they ask you to complete two years of study, the uh, graduation from Tasmanian Institute only. So in case if you have completed two years of study in Tasmanian Institute, you could be eligible to apply for 190. I have seen applicants where they have completed the two years of study from University of Tasmania, but they had no job, even though for offer letter or anything. Uh, the Tasmanian government refused their applications because they ask you that um, whatever study you have done in Tasmania, make sure you have the proper commitment and proper, you know, career pathway to apply for 190 state sponsorship. Or else if you have six months of full time job in your nominated occupation, you have good chance to get invited under 190 state category. Uh, if you have done me mechanical engineer, civil engineer, and if you are working six months full time job in Tasmania, then you have a good chance to get invited under 190 category because majority of engineering occupations falls under their own uh, Tasmanian skill occupation list, which is called TSOL, Tasmanian skill occupation list. They have their own occupation list. If your occupation falls under this particular category, you get first priority. Now 491, you can do a one year study plus commitment, or six months of full-time job. Uh, even though if you complete one year relevant study to your normal occupations, and if you show the career pathway or commitment to the Tasmanian government, commitment means that you require a job, you require a proper household over there. And in, the, in case if you don't have a full-time offer letter in, in Tasmania, then you may get refused. So make sure you remember that when you go to Tasmania and study there for one year, if you don't have a job offer letter after completing your one year of study, you have very high chance to get refused or in Tasmania. So make sure you remember that. Uh, choose Tasmania bef before you find a job, okay? <clears throat> South Slayer, my favorite. If you go for 491, it's based one. Or else if you've been studying in uh, South Australia for more than two years, uh, those candidates who came from their home country directly to South Australia and been studying over there, they have very good chance to get invited. They just need three months of experience. They also have the graduate pathway. If you have higher GPA, 
through the your study study then you can also get invited under 190 or 491 so if you go to good, more than 6.0 gpa in your during your academic career you can get invited under the south australian government uh, 190 uh, pathway or else if you are working in your occupations for more than six months you have a good chance to get invited under 491 majority of occupations uh, getting invited in the 491 category because if you are interested candidate and if you are going there and if you're studying there it's a very less chances where you can get inviting under 190 category all right so there are more majority occupation getting invited under 491 if you're not able to get a because most of engineering occupations getting invitation if they have six months uh part-time jobs in your in their nominal occupation from greater adelaide then only they get invited under 491 but if you're not able to find a job in your nominated occupation, still you can get invited under 491, but you have to work minimum 12 months in outer regional suburb. Let's say we talk about Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide comes under the outer regional of South Australia. So if you work in any occupation, does not have to be skilled occupation nor related to your nominated occupations, you may be eligible to apply for nominated, nominated for 491 applications, all right? So in case if you go to uh, South Australia and if you work in outer regional, let's say you're working here in Coles, and if you work in outer regional in Coles as a team member, you can still be eligible after completing your 12 months. Again, you also need six bands in each module, skill assessment and 50 points by yourself. So that is a minimum requirement which you have to meet. It. Make sure you remember that. All right. All right. So this is South Australia. OK, uh, a long term residence. Those applicants have been living in Greater Adelaide for more than three years or five years or seven years. Those who have been living more than five years or seven years, they have a good chance to get invited under 190 state sponsorship category. But those who have been living over there for more than three years, but working in any field, doesn't matter. You don't have to work in your normal occupations, but you just have a skill assessment in your occupations. You can get invited under 190, uh, 491 for three years. For five years and seven years, have a good chance to get invited under 190 state sponsorship category. We have seen where we got invited under 190 category, where applicant was living over there for more than five years, and they, they did not know that pathway, so they came to us, and we applied for skill assessment under the engineering technologies, and they got invited. Uh, and that's how they they got invited in the 190 category. So even though if you are living for more than three years and you think that you could not have an invitation, but this is one of the best pathway for the long term residents. South Australia is giving invitation to that category. 190 major occupation require currently working nominated or close related occupations for at least 12 months in Greater Adelaide. Okay, so in case if you are working in Greater Adelaide for more than 12 months in your engineering related occupations in your nominated occupations, you have good chance to get invited under 190 state sponsorship. And for six months in outer regional, you have chance to get invited under 190. But for interstate, do not believe that you have good chance to get invited under 190, but you can still try to apply for 190, all right? <clears throat> okay, PR Pathway Engineering Northern Territory. I have seen, uh, as per my experience, uh, those who've been working over there, um, like 12 months working over there, and you know, they don't require to be a Northern Territory graduate. They have two pathways, 491 and 190. One is called the International Graduate Pathway. If you have studied over there for at least two years, right, uh, you can be eligible to apply for 190 state sponsorship, but if you've been working over there 12 months, right, and from the Northern Territory employer, then you can be eligible to apply for 491 category. But uh, even though if you do uh, study over there in higher education, then only you have a good chance to get invited under 190 category because Northern Territory believe that if you have completed your study from Charles Darwin University in Northern Territory campus uh, for two years minimum in higher study, master or bachelor, then only you get good chance to get invited under 190 category. Otherwise, you'll come up with the 491 category. So you remember that before you go there, you do study in Charles Darwin industry. And additionally, you also get two years of uh, two years of studies in regional. You get additional five points for being studying in regional area as well. As we discussed, international student graduates who have studied in Northern Territory will be eligible for subclass 190 category, and especially those who have studied from Charles Darwin industry or their TEF, all right, that government TEF. Austrian Capital Territory. Wow. Austrian Capital Territory is a great state to apply for 190. They have the metric system. 
those uh, applicants who have completed the study in one of these categories, civil engineering, geonautic, uh, geotechnical engineer structure, transport, aeronautical, agriculture, biomedical, or environmental, they have good chance to get invited on the 190. In case if you're not able to find a job in your nomad occupations, and if you move to Canberra, and if you work any field for minimum six months, you could be eligible to apply for ACT matrix, right? And is it why is ACT, Australian Capital Territory, can be a good state to apply for these occupations because the ACT is only state who give invitation uh, without working in your normal occupation. Of course, NSW also does that, but ACT is also giving invitation under the 190 and 491 without working in your normal occupation. So if you're not able to find a job in your occupations, uh, I would recommend you to move to an, uh, you know, ACT. Civil engineer is one of the best occupations in ACT because civil engineer was open before pandemic, uh, during the pandemic and after pandemic as well. So NSW is um, uh, for civil, uh, NSW is the best state and especially biomedical also. Uh, for engineering occupations, you know, NSW is one of the best one, Queensland is the second one and uh, Canberra is the third one if you're looking to apply for 190 state sponsorship, all right? So, they have the different matrix system in um, like you know in ACD you have to meet the matrix system requirement and every month they have two to three rounds where they uh, they allocate the you know ceilings to the candidates and last invitation we received under civil engineer was under 491 was with 50 points in mat matrix so the candidate been there for three months and work minimum part time in ACD, got eight in each band, and then we apply with the 50 points in matrix, and he got invited under 491. Even though if you work six months full-time job in ACD, you could be eligible to apply for 190. And these are the, you know, hot engineering occupation to get invitation under the ACD, which I believe they've been open since longer time. So you should focus on if you are falling under one of these category, and if you don't have a job in your normal occupations, Australian capital territory is the best state to move there, and uh, NSW is of course, but yeah, they have the metric system. And if you, in case if you're not able to get eight in each pen, you can still get invited under 190 state category without any normal occupations experience with seven bands in each module as well. So ACD is a good state for these occupations. Uh, we talk about the PR pathway engineering for Queensland now. Queensland, as you as you know, that uh, government has announced the priority migration skill occupation list. Uh, every uh, due to the pandemic, they're focusing for certain occupation where they are prioritized these occupations under those categories. Queensland only inviting those who who falls under the priority migration skill occupation list. They used to have three or four engineering occupation, but recently they have announced too many occupations under this category. So there are nearly th more than 32 occupations altogether. Sorry, 22 occupations altogether. And another priority migration skill occupation list, uh, mechanical engineer is one of them, civil engineer is one of them, electrical engineer is one of them. But 190, if you're looking to one, apply for 190 in Queensland, you must need six months of full-time experience in normal occupations. As for the data, they invited with 80 points, including state. So in case if you have 80 points, including state, so yourself, if you are 75 points, but if you are six months full-time job in your normal occupation, you could go for the Queensland state, one of the best state, one of my favorite state to apply for 190 application. Even though uh, we have seen there, uh, even though if you don't fall under the priority migration skill occupation list, still they got invited under the engineering occupation under the 190 state. So in case if you're able to find a job in Queensland under the engineering field in your normal occupations, and if you get 80 points at least, if you have a higher point, you have a good chance, but if you have 80 points at least, including state, you have a good, good, good chance to get invited in Queensland itself. And for 491, doesn't matter what, what occupation they have, you just have to work three months full-time job in Queensland Regional, you have a good chance to get invitation. So in case if you move to Queensland Regional area and if you work six months over there, you can be eligible to apply for 190 if your occupation falls under priority migration skill occupation list. And in case if you're not getting invited under 190, you're still eligible to apply for 491. So that way you can explore two ways to get invited under 190 or 491. All right, next one is the Western Australia. Western Australia have only graduate stream and general stream. No engineer occupations uh, falls under the general stream at all. 
So we're not going to discuss about general stream, but graduate stream, that's one of the base stream to apply. They just getting in rotation with 75 or 80 points. Sometimes you get invited with 70 points as well. And I have seen applicants where they get in, they got invited and have 190 states possible with 70 points only. And they're asking for two years of calendar study, not the academic study, because there's a difference between the calendar study and academic study in WA. WA specifically, they're asking for 24 minimum month study. And if you have completed 24 months of minimum study, any field doesn't matter, but if you have your if you have uh, uh, you know occupations in uh, if you have skill assessment in one of these occupations, you can be eligible. These are the occupations are available under the graduate work graduate stream in South Australia. So this stream was used to open in Victoria, but it's not no longer open since last year. But this stream is available in uh, uh, WA Perth, Western Australia. If you have completed two years of study over there, and if you have six months of job contract, you can be eligible to apply for 190 state sponsorship through Perth WS state sponsorship. And these are the hot occupations are available engineering equation to get invited in WA. So if you are following any of those occupations, and if you uh, this uh, and if you have completed two years of study, uh, you have very good chances to be invited under this category. Hope you have clear with your doubts and questions. I mean, if you have any question, you can ask me now. Um, we are almost up on time, but we can take two, three few like questions right now. So uh, one of the question we have from a guest called uh, Fateh, uh, they say that I've completed four years civil engineering in India, but I have one year's uh, master's accredited from UK in structural engineering. Which pathway is appropriate? Uh, see, if you can get a uh, skill assessment under structural engineer, structural engineer is a very one of the best occupations in NSW. NSW inviting under the it, even the civil engineer also getting invitation with the 90 points. So you don't need to find a job in your nominated occupation, but structural engineer is one of the best occupation as well. Uh, if you go for the 190 pathway through the NSW, so NSW uh, you should move there. And if you have 85 points, yep, I would recommend. Uh, go for 190. Don't go for 491. I always believe in 189 or 190 stage mostly because these are the permanent residence pathway. If you have higher points, try to get higher points because I have seen that candidates not able to try the higher points. They don't have too much points in their occupation. They don't go for the PT. They don't go for NATI. They don't go for professional year. Try to get a you know higher points. So NSW is open for higher points. Queensland is open for higher points. So these these are the state who giving the 190 state sponsorship. If you're not able to score 18 inch band, then you should go for 491. But I always believe in 190 state sponsorship or 189. So yeah, NSW is good for structural engineer and civil engineer both. Uh, so there's another question uh, from Prince. Uh, he says, I have civil engineering positive skill assessment, 85 points, two years of field experience. Is there any chance I get an invite from New South Wales 190 invitation? Yes, uh, if you look at the picture, if you look at the data, I can tell you uh, the data. Uh, in May May 2021, uh, civil engineer was invited with 95 points, including the state. But in June, June 2021, Civil engineer was invited with 85 points only, including state sponsorship. So if you have 85 points, including state sponsorship, and you don't need to find a job in NSW, you could have good chance to get invited, but you must be living in NSW. Make sure you require a lease agreement, uh, a bank statement with the transaction. You need a uh, light bill or gas bill, telephone bill, internet bill, and one ID proof uh, that has to be from your post office or you can, if you have driving license here in Victoria or any other state, you can change the driving license in NSW. Once you have those documents and if you are starting a job in any field and if you have 90 points or 85 points, including state, yep, NSW is a base state. And NSW, it's a very less chances where NSW will remove because I, I believe on statistics, I believe the data. If I, if I look at the data of the last 10 years, I'm talking about the since last 10 years, NSW was open since last 10 years in engineering occupation and in IT occupation and health occupation. So if you are in any of this category, health, IT or engineering, you have very good chances to get invited. Uh, so another question is from Sai. Uh, he says EOI 189 visa with 90 points, PT8 and NATI submitted in December 2020 under engineering technologist. 
I will get to 95 by February 22 when I complete three years work experience in Perth, currently under TSS 4A2 visa as electrical engineer. Uh, tentative invite expectation in duration if possible. Uh, engineering technology is very much hard. Almost no, I would say no. It's very, I don't think so. You get invited under 189. You should do re skill assessment again because uh, maybe it look like you have not provided proper CDR uh, because, uh, for engineering or uh, for electrical engineering occupations. Uh, that's the reason they may have you know uh, they may have assessed your degree into the engineering technologies. Try to reassess again in electrical engineer. And if you not go with the electrical engineer, you also have a good pathway under the 186 visa on the TRT stream or direct entry stream. If you're completing three years and if you are employees. Happy to sponsor you. Just go for that pathway because employer sponsor pathway is also a good pathway to get permanent visa, which we not discuss it during our session. I have a lot of clients who've been working in that nominated field and they've been working for more than two years full time under the 485 graduate visa, and they apply for 482 visa. And after one year completing all together, when they have three years of full time experience, uh, they're applying uh, 186 under direct entry stream. Because when you talk, talk about the under 186 direct entry stream, if you have in total three years of experience after completing your study, 16 inch pen in RTS or PT, and if you have skill assessment in your normal occupations, you have a good chance to get invited under 190, uh, sorry, under 186 visa. Not invited, you have a good chance to get uh, approval under 186 visa through the direct entry employer sponsor pathway. Uh, so this is another question from Ruth Deep Kaur. Uh, what are the ways to get PR for telecommunication engineer at 85 points? As currently, I'm doing PhD in IT and working as a part-time sessional tutor in IT at Federation University Australia since February 21. See, if you are in Victoria itself uh, and if you are doing a PhD, then you have a good pathway under the PhD uh, category in Victoria State. So Victoria State government inviting those who have completed the PhD. Uh, uh, getting invitation under the 190. Also, if you're completing your PhD here in Victoria, you also have a good pathway to apply for uh, GTI, you know, the Global Talent Independent Visa. You can go for the Global Talent Independent Visa as well. Parallelly, try to find a job in telecommunication engineer. We, we received one invitation two days ago from the telecommunication engineer. The applicant was working for more than one year in telecommunication engineering field here in Victoria and has got invited. So what we can do is we can make a kind of submission. If you are working in a telecommunication engineer, we can make a kind of submission that you're also doing a PhD. So you have good chance to get invited under 190 stage concept if you're not completing your PhD and if you want to make an application before PhD. Uh, let's take a last question. Uh, two or three people have asked about uh, when you were talking about the invites, if these are invites are only within Australia currently or they have started inviting from outside as well. Like are they calling any offshore applicants in 189? Oh, that's a bit <laughs> tricky again because when you make an application for express of interest, let's say if you've been living here in Victoria and some some reason if you left the country last year and could not able to come back because you are on temporary residence visa, I had an applicant where uh, applicant applied an express of interest over here with 90 points in last year in civil engineer, and obviously when you when you live in Victoria and uh, we we put a postcode because when you apply for express of interest you put the postcode you've been living here and he got invited and recently he's got his visa as well. And it's coming back. So if those applicants who've been living over here for longer period who have studied over here, but they left the country for certain reason and then could not able to come back because of their own temporary residence visa, then you know you can make an application on EOI because you had a residence over here and then you have a good chance to get invited. But otherwise, for offshore applicants, they do not invite those who are living offshore. Uh, thank you. Uh, so for uh, the viewers, don't worry if your questions could not be answered during the session. Uh, we have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the day today from 5 p.m. Also, we have your contact details and our team will get in touch with you to assist you after the event as well. And uh, thank you so much for attending the session. Don't forget to leave your review for the session. The link is shared in the chat box. Uh, your feedback is much appreciated. Don't miss out our next info sessions on exciting topics. Join straight away through the links in the chat box. Thanks uh, again for joining us today. Have a great day ahead. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a lovely day. Bye.